Hello, I'm Dr Octavia Cox and welcome to Texts of the Past. A reading of Oscar Wilde's A Preface to Dorian Gray, published in 1891. But first, some context. In the July 1890 issue of Lippincott's magazine, Oscar Wilde published a 13-chapter version of The Picture of Dorian Gray. Criticism was immediate and hostile. Take, for example, this scathing review from the Daily Chronicle on the 30th of June, 1890. Dullness and dirt are the chief features of Lippincott's this month. The element in it that is unclean, though undeniably amusing, is furnished by Mr Oscar Wilde's story of the picture of Dorian Gray. It is a tale spawned from the leprous literature of the French decadence, a poisonous book, the atmosphere of which is heavy with the mephitic odours of moral and spiritual putrefaction. A gloating study of the mental and physical corruption of a fresh, fair and golden youth, which might be horrible and fascinating, but for its effeminate frivolity, its studied insincerity, its theatrical cynicism, its tawdry mysticism, its flippant philosophizings, and the contaminating trail of garish vulgarity, which is over all Mr Wilde's elaborate Wardour Street aestheticism and obtrusively cheap scholarship. Wardour Street is located in Soho in London. The next year, in 1891, Oscar Wilde was revising and editing the novel The Picture of Dorian Gray for publication in book form. It would eventually be published in book form in 21 chapters in April 1891. In preparation for his revised publication of the novel, Oscar Wilde wrote a defence of his work, originally called Dogmas for the Use of the Ages in which he issued a challenge to the hostile reviewers and critics who had so heavily censured the original publication of The Picture of Dorian Gray. Oscar Wilde was keen to chastise his critics in a preemptive strike. As he wrote in March 1891 in a letter to J.S. Little, who was the Executive Secretary of the Society of Authors, My novel appears in volume form that is, book form, next month, and I am curious to see whether these wretched journalists will assail it so ignorantly and pruriently as they did before. My preface should teach them to mend their wicked ways. To be prurient is to be excessively or inappropriately concerned with sexual matters. And in this letter we see two central themes that run throughout the preface, which is the ignorance and prurience of others, especially those wretched journalists. In the same month as this letter, in March 1891, Oscar Wilde published his defence of himself and his art, and his condemnation of the ignorance and prurience of his critics, in the fortnightly review as a preface to Dorian Gray. A preface to Dorian Gray. The artist is the creator of beautiful things. To reveal art and conceal the artist is art's aim. The critic is he who can translate into another manner or a new material his impression of beautiful things. The highest as the lowest form of criticism is a mode of autobiography. Those who find ugly meanings in beautiful things are corrupt without being charming. This is a fault. Those who find beautiful meanings in beautiful things are the cultivated. For these there is hope. They are the elect to whom beautiful things mean only beauty. 
There is no such thing as a moral or an immoral book. Books are well written or badly written. That is all. The 19th century dislike of realism is the rage of Caliban seeing his own face in a glass. The 19th century dislike of romanticism is the rage of Caliban not seeing his own face in a glass. The moral life of man forms part of the subject matter of the artist, but the morality of art consists in the perfect use of an imperfect medium. No artist desires to prove anything. Even things that are true can be proved. No artist has ethical sympathies. An ethical sympathy in an artist is an unpardonable mannerism of style. Thought and language are to the artist instruments of an art. Vice and virtue are to the artist materials of his art. From the point of view of form, the type of all the arts is the art of the musician. From the point of view of feeling, the actor's craft is the type. All art is at once surface and symbol. Those who go beneath the surface do so at their peril. Those who read the symbol do so also at their peril. It is the spectator and not life that art really mirrors. Diversity of opinion about a work of art shows that the work is new, complex and vital. When critics disagree, the artist is in accord with himself. We can forgive a man for making a useful thing as long as he does not admire it. The only excuse for making a useless thing is that one admires it inordinately. All art is quite useless. Oscar Wilde. A Preface to Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde, published in March 1891.